Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the undergraduate um, compiler techniques course in um, the University of Edinburgh. Uh, we teach about 150 students every year. Um, and we'd like to teach them both the fundamental concepts in compilers and about real world uh, open source compilation tools. So the way that we want to structure the course is to take something that they're fam fairly familiar with, uh, Python, and to target a real world um, instruction set architecture called RISC-V. And we do a lot of research uh, in MLIR. So we'd really like them to learn how modern compiler, uh, compilers are structured and the concepts that they use. So if we take the kind of broad concepts in compilation, you kind of have passing and other concepts in the front end. You have analysis like type checking, and then you have uh, lowering. And um, we structured the course in terms of these concepts and some more such as error reporting, analysis, and optimizations. And uh, we decided to make these into the core practical uh, tasks that the undergraduate students have to do. So when we're designing uh, the course, we kind of had a rough estimate of how difficult the students would find each of the individual concepts. So you might think maybe AST is maybe not super difficult, SSA is a bit easier to explain, dialects, uh, type checking, people rewrites, things like that. Register allocation, probably a bit more difficult. And one of the problems that we had with MLIR was that it actually involves quite a lot of complex infrastructure um, that it needs for its own use case as a production uh, compiler framework. But in the context of a course that's really geared towards a wide range of um, kind of technical background, uh, we found that the concepts that MLIR brings in are much more difficult to explain and to guide the students uh, with. So this is uh, another rough estimate uh, of uh, teaching time to make all of this work for 150 students uh, every year. So if we kind of look at it in terms of a learning curve, the cumulative uh, destination, you really first have to hit some pretty difficult things to um, configure if you're not familiar with them. And then after that, it gets pretty easy. So if you have the C++ background, then the curve is pretty nice. But uh, the question is, how do we overcome this initial steep learning curve? And this is a question we asked ourselves for a bit. And uh, one of the things that we thought, well, what if we provided the students with a more familiar environment um, such that they could first get the nice learning curve and then learn C++ uh, kind of infrastructure once they've covered the core concepts. So one of the things that we thought was it would be nice to have these concepts available to the students in Python. Um, and so we de designed this framework that would let us teach the MLI concepts directly that would teach the tools that um, some of the tools that MLI uses, what MLIR IR looks like, and do that with a framework that uses Python with types. So we have some nice kind of static analysis and uh, tools that help the students uh, in the programming part of the assignments. Um, and we really wanted it to be usable on the undergraduate students' own laptops, which actually are really sensitive to the footprint of the uh, kind of installation of the framework itself. Um, and we really wanted it to be easy for them to kind of explore into the way that it's built as well and not use too many advanced concepts. So uh, that's one of the kind of um, uh, things that we changed to um, our initial flow. And the other change that we made is instead of targeting all of Python, which actually has some pretty complex semantics, we um, uh, used this subset of Python with types that was designed to be taught to undergraduate students. Um, uh, it has a, a really uh, detailed language reference. Um, and while being familiar 
for the students that have used uh, Python before. Um, it's really much, much simpler. So it's called ChocoPy, and uh, you can find it if you'd like um, on its website. It's a, a really nice language uh, for teaching. For those of you who don't know RISC-V, it's a really uh, simple instruction set architecture. It's open source. It's getting more and more popular. And it has a number of uh, really nice tools, such as RISC-EMU, that let us emulate the code that the compiler that the undergraduate Rice um, students uh, produce, um, all in Python. So next, Mathieu is going to talk about the course itself. Hi, everyone. So to start the course, I'm just going to explain a bit what the compiler looks like. So at first, and what the students are going to do with that compiler. So what we need to start with, of course, is parsing. So we need to take Chocopy as input, and then we need to produce something as output. So usually, we would use something like an AST. In our case, we decided to embed this directly in MLIR on the format of a dialect that we call Choco AST. Then students will write uh, some analysis on it, such as type checking or dead code, elimination, uh, dead code analysis to provide. And then we get another Choco AST with a bit of some annotations on them. Then we provide our own lowering to another dialect representation called Choco SSA, which is a more SSA representation of what ChocoPy is. And we task students then to lower this to another representation called RIS5 SSA, which is kind of a RIS5 dialect with control flow um, and with uh, infinite registers. Then we can we ourselves wrote a register allocator that translates this to a RIS5 assembly dialect which then we give directly to RIS5, so then we can just call the interpreter. So the students have three coursework, the parsing, the analysis, and the lowering coursework. Each of these coursework having two tasks, one kind of normal task and one expert task, which is for students to kind of explore themselves, the subject, and which is a really like open-ended uh, task. So let's start with the first one, with parsing. So we start with the parsing of Chocopy, so as I said, we have the Chocopy's input, we want to provide an AST. So this is something fairly standard that we have in compilers that student needs, needs to learn about. And what they're going to do is then translate this to this Choco AST. So the way we encode AST in MLIR is by hacking a bit into regions to represent these tree structures. So for instance, here the assign uh, node, which is a Choco AST assign operation, has two regions one for the left-hand side and one for the right-hand side, and then this binary expression, which has the same similar thing. One good thing here is that we directly is teaching students about MLI concepts, such as operations, regions, before even starting to talk about SSA, which may be sometimes a bit harder to learn. So we kind of gradually introduce them to this kind of MLI concept from the get-go. Uh, on the top right, you can see those ticks, which will be kind of the concept that they're going to learn throughout the way, uh, throughout the all these tasks and exercises. We directly introduce them as well with file check. So when we're going to provide them for the task, we're going to provide them some tests using file check. So they can check directly on the computer if they go into the right direction or not by checking if they implemented correctly kind of the base um, tests. And then we have our own hidden tests to automatically evaluate them by just checking how many they pass, for instance. So here, if we get the same kind of C equal A plus B operation, we just have check and check next. That is just enough to check that they have the correct AST as there's only a single possible output in that case, since we don't ask them to write any optimization or anything else. Then, we to, to guide them to write this, we need to provide them a, a grammar. So we provide them for the LL2 grammar that uh, the Chocopy documentation has. We just simplify it, since we're removing some feature of Chocopy. And we provide them as well the Choco AST dialect. So what we're doing here is that we provide them directly the definition of the Choco AST dialect as we have in XDSL. So that allows them to directly learn about reading those dialect definitions to make them a bit more familiar with how operations are actually defined. Note that since this is an XDSL is a bit different, but in MLIR we would get kind of the same kind of concept. We would have one uh, property definition and two region definitions. Then what they have to write is a 
recursive descent parser. So I won't go much in detail with it, but we provide them a lexer. So this is the check and the match methods here to just check that the next token is of a specific kind or match it if we want to consume it. And one thing interesting as well is by doing this, they're also learning how to build MLIRs. So here they're creating a new binary expression with the expression one and expression two as input for the regions. So this helps them as well a bit getting familiar more and more with MLIR, not they understand how it looks like, not they understand how you can actually build it. <coughs> the second task of the, this kind of compiler front end where this parsing is the error reporting. We give them a more open-ended um, task on actually reporting correctly the errors that they have and having kind of nice error messages. In that case, they just teach them that compilers are not only about compiling, it's also about giving errors to the users in case there's a problem. So once they've done this passing to the Choco AST, they want, we want them to learn about writing analysis. So we're going to start by tasking them to write uh, type checking, which is one sort of analysis, you could say. We provide them with the basic type theory rules that we have. For instance, here, if we have e that is an int, an expression that is an int, then the negation minus e is also an int. And that's how we type correctly um, Chocobi programs. We just have around 20 rules, if I recall. We task them to write their type and their typing rules directly as attributes. So we show them that kind of MLI programs can be extended with a bit more information. And we can use this attribute dictionary to write additional I mean, information here, for instance, type information that we're going to use later on ourselves for the lowerings. We, after doing this type checking um, task, we task them to write a dead code analysis, which is really open-ended. We tell them that there's kind of four or five different ways we, um, four or five different definition of dead code. In that case, it's kind of a broad definition. We have unreachable statement, for instance. Here, we have a print after a return, so that code will never be reached. We have a news variable. If you define a variable but never use it, this should report a warning. You have unreachable expression. So in that case, we have none if true, else foo, meaning that none will always be the one chosen and foo will never be called, meaning actually the function foo itself will never be called. And we have a new store, which is when you store on a variable, but you actually never read it. Where this becomes very open-ended is, what if the top right example, instead of just saying if true else known, we do if x, if x, and x is assigned to true before, or x is assigned to an expression that will always evaluate to true. And this is where we task them as well to think about writing constant analysis so they can kind of a bit explore what you can do with analysis. So once that we done with the analysis, we're going to bo more of like the, co the compilation part of the compiler with the lowerings. So we already provide them the lowering from our AST representation to the SSA representation simply because they have other classes and they don't have time to write the entire compiler. And now it has them to go from this Choco SSA representation to this RIS-5 SSA representation. So if we take this simple example program, we take a Boolean x equal to true, and then we just, if x is equal to true, we print 0, else we print 1. Let's just forget that this code can be really easily simplified. And let's see how we can lower this from our Choco SSA representation to the RIS-5 representation. So on the left, we would get what the, the students would get from the Choco SSA representation, which has control flow, which has definition for function, it has allocation, stores. And on the right, we would get, um, this is what we expect them to get at the end, which is this RIS-5 SSA representation, which is a huge hack for MLIIR because we have jumps, we have labels. So there's, essentially, this is a graph regions where everything jumps everywhere. What we want is first we task them, oh, this is what happened with variables. We have literals that get translated to a constant in RIS-5. We get allocation, which get also translation, translated to this kind of alloc in RIS-5 SSA. And we have stores that get translated to stores. 
So a log here will allocate on the stack or on a register if we can. Uh, and that's what the register allocation part is going to do. We have structural control flow, which get translated to jumps um, and labels. And finally, we also have call expression, which we kept in uh, RISC 5 SSA to make a bit easier for students that don't have to think about what's going to happen with the call is safe, call is safe register, etc. This, this was for the task one. They also have to implement things like lists, what happens, how do we represent lists in memory. And after that, the really open-ended task and where like students that really start liking compilers at that point will definitely do is what happens when you want to actually optimize this. So if we take a simple example, this is what the RISC-5 looks like for the first time they're going to see it. And this is absolutely huge compared to what the inputs look like. So um, students have different ways they can optimize it. We kind of give them four or five simple directions they could go. One of them is just looking at constant folding um, because they already have done a constant analysis. If they do constant folding, that, if they can adapt it to a constant folding at whatever level in the IR, they could actually optimize some parts of it. There's also, it's a bit hidden here, but there's also stores that are directly followed by load at the exact same place in memory. They don't have to write something as complex as mem to reg, but seeing those patterns can quickly lead them to really nice, I mean, speed ups. In that case, we just actually compare the numbers of lines of code that they output. But you have also other optimization they can do, such as improving the register allocation we give them. Um, at first, we only give them a register allocation that does not allocate registers and just put everything on the stack. And otherwise, what they can implement is something like ints combine optimizations, like simple arithmetic optimization, like x plus y minus, wall equal, minus y equal x. So now that we've seen what kind of the compiler looks like and what uh, the students have to task, I'll let Sasha do the conclusion. Um. So what's really the objective of the course? Obviously, we want the students to learn the uh, concepts and the practical tools to implement compilers. But ultimately, we really want them to feel empowered to write their own compilers and to hopefully join the LLVM and the Maya community and start contributing um, to LLVM and Maya directly. Um, and it's looking pretty promising. So a couple of our students have gone on uh, after doing this course to write some uh, similar compilers, either from the sort of built-in dialects to a similar x86 dialect. Another student has gone on to um, implement a part of uh, the Onyx to Linalg uh, translation in XTSL, and hopefully that will also lead to some upstream work. And we've actually been able to use this tool initially intended for teaching for some Pretty interesting research, like uh, how to compile Linalg microkernels to some RISC-V based machine learning accelerators and some other open source contributions like stencil compilation for supercomputers. And some of that research that we've done has already started to be upstreamed into MLIR. For example, the MPI dialect uh, that uh, has been started recently upstream. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we take students um, through both the core concepts of a compiler and the um, kind of tooling uh, that is uh, that are used um, in the real world, and um, uh, we found it pretty effective. Thank you.